Happy Thursday! I am going live at noon today because I have something, actually I'm going somewhere later today. So I wanted to make sure that I got my Thursday live in for all of you that are interested in watching. And I, yeah, here we are. So happy Thursday. We are here today to discuss emotional abuse and how it's like a drug. How being in a toxic situation, whether it be at home, at work, with friends, with family, it's a toxic situation that sort of seems like a drug addiction, if you really think about it. And we're going to dig deeper into that, but I just wanted to welcome you here as you're watching. Please let me know where you're watching from. And if you're watching this on the replay, comment hashtag replay and let me know where you're coming in from because I like to say hi to people in all areas of the world. So um, also, if you can see me, please let me know that you can see and hear me because I'm going on faith here that this is doing what it's supposed to do. So we are here to talk about breaking the cycle, understanding and healing from emotional abuse. And I am fully aware that most people aren't even aware that they're in a toxic situation. So if you are not aware and or maybe you know somebody that you think maybe is in a situation that's not the best or healthy for them, pay attention because these things that I'm going to talk about today might help you or someone you care about. So um, for those of you who don't know me, my name is Annette and I've spent the last the better part of the last 25 years working on who I am and who I'm becoming and creating the best human that I know how to be. And I love the quote by, I think it's Maya Angelou that says, once you know better, you do better. Well, I didn't know any better. I didn't know as a young adult that I was reacting to triggers when I was dealing with other people, that I was doing things that were self harming like drinking too much or not taking care of myself not taking care of my health all as a response to triggers and over the last few years I've learned a lot about myself and I've learned a lot about the process of growth and emotional intelligence which is like my favorite topic on the planet and uh, fortunately, I have a lot of experience in this area. I've been through a lot of these things. I've had extensive training, extensive coaching, and I've spent a lot of time processing my own emotions and triggers. Now, does that mean that I won't at some point react instead of respond? No, I am an imperfect human. I have battle scars and I may or may not be able to catch myself in a situation that is highly triggering but I'm always working to do better and I'm always looking for ways to improve my boundaries and my awareness in situations so that I can live a joyful, happy, fulfilled life. And I like sharing what I've learned with other people. So that's, that's a little bit about who I am. I literally was the overachiever, the perfectionist, the self-proclaimed OCD person, I got pregnant at 16. I was single from the age of like 26 to 48. And then I got married, which is a whole nother story for a whole nother video. But um, if you haven't read my book, Dragonfly Into the Light, I highly recommend you do that. If you need some information on where to grab that, you can check my links in my bio or just message me and I'm happy to send you a link where you can check that book out. It's gotten amazing reviews, and I think a lot of people find it very helpful in the situations that they're in as far as raising awareness and giving them some tips and tricks on how to begin the healing process, even if you're still in a situation that might not be ideal. I know sometimes people say, just leave. Well, some people, you can't just leave. Like, you can't just leave your family because they are your family. And even though some people do eventually come to the point where they cut ties with their family, I that is not something that I would advocate for unless it's a really, really bad situation. So anyway, back to the reason that you're here. Thanks for coming. Thanks for watching. And I see that somebody made a comment, but I cannot see what the comment is. So 
if you are commenting, which I recommend you do, go ahead and do that. And if I don't see it pop up, I will respond to you separately later. Okay. Emotional abuse is a silent destroyer. It leaves invisible scars on your soul. And I often speak of it as a drug because breaking the cycle of toxic behaviors, toxic relationships, trauma bonds, all of those things are literally like trying to detox your body and your brain from drugs. If you think about it, typically, the abuser, the person who is emotionally abusing you, has spent their entire life in what I call their pathology, their own mental prison, whatever you want to call it, and they have had a lot of practice at manipulating people and getting their way and learning how to make themselves feel better by breaking down other people. And some of them are very aware that they're doing it. And some people aren't really all that aware that it's just how they live. They live this toxic life and it's not fun for them. And it's definitely not fun for the people that are exposed to them. And I mean, if, if somebody is like a narcissist or a psychopath, they probably know that they're manipulating people and that's how they, that's their MO, that's how they run. But there are people that are not diagnosable as having that mental condition that maybe are like stuck in a trauma cycle and they just don't understand that the way they're treating people is unacceptable and they don't understand why they feel really good for a while and then they feel horrible and they take it out on other people. That's a whole nother topic for a whole nother discussion. And uh, I just wanted to throw that out there though because I don't wanna give them a freebie, like give them a, a free way out, but I do understand that a lot of times the people that are abusing you emotionally, manipulating you, treating you badly, are doing so because they're suffering. They're also suffering on the inside. And they just haven't figured out yet that their broken way of living isn't going to get them anywhere. It's just not going to help. So these people have spent their entire lives honing their skills, perfecting their skills. Many people will say that they all say the same phrases, like you're crazy, you're overreacting. Like you'll hear a lot of times in conversations that people who are emotionally abusing other people like use the same playbook because manipulation is manipulation and it's all the phrases are the same all of the things it's very common that they say sentences that are word for word the same as someone else so you'll hear those things and you'll start to make connections about those things as you get more educated but you go through a cycle of love bombing where they're showering you with love and gratitude and gifts and they're making you feel amazing. They're pulling you into their world. They're telling you, you're my soulmate or you're the best person I've ever known. I adore you. And they may in the beginning because if they're not aware of what they're doing per se, they may not know that this is a cycle that they're doing, but it is a cycle. That cycle of love bombing and high passion and all of that energy isn't something that can be continued long term. Nobody has the ability to do that. So at some point, once they've gathered all kinds of information on you, they've learned what makes you tick and you feel like Ooh, they really want to get to know me. They really want to know everything about me. They accept me for who I am 100% and they love me. Well, that's great. <laughs> but what you'll find is in these situations, once the love bombing phase is over, they start using that information that they gathered as a way to manipulate you. They're learning how to push your buttons. They're learning how to get you to react. They're creating triggers that they can use later to manipulate you. And if you've been through this and you've realized that you were in that kind of a situation, I'm sure that this will make sense to you. 
uh, you know, drop me an emoji if you kind of get it, if you understand where I'm going with this, because my real passion in life is to raise awareness and awaken people to the possibility that maybe they aren't exactly in the best situation and to begin to heal themselves and hopefully the people around them as they learn and as they grow. Um, so we're going to talk about the insidious nature of emotional abuse. We're going to shed some light on its effects. We're going to talk about some of the symptoms that you might experience and why it's like a drug addiction and why you cannot stay away from these types of people. And we're going to get into that a little deeper here in a little bit. I also created a list of physical symptoms. I posted it in the Facebook group, but if you didn't see it and you'd like to see that, you can comment hashtag signs on this video and I'll drop you the link to that post so that you can see what the signs are, which are like, um, and this, this list is pretty extensive and it has explanations, but like migraines, digestive issues, like IBS, exhaustion, body aches, weight fluctuations, weight gain or weight loss that you just can't seem to explain or control, heart rate changes like pounding heart, anxiety, weakened immune system, like you get sick every month when your period comes around or like you get sick anytime something big is happening, like vacation, always get sick. Keep those things in mind. And of course, depression goes with all of those things as well. But I have a more extensive list with things that you can grab um, inside the group or just comment on this video signs and I'll drop the link for you because it's right here in this group. Okay, so recognizing the cycle. Emotional abusers manipulate and engage solely when they, cre when they crave a dopamine hit. So um, let's briefly talk about the drug ad addict commonality here. When you're in a situation where you're being love bombed, you're getting all of this oxytocin, which is a love hormone. You're getting dopamine, which is a feel good hormone. Your serotonin, like all of those, those hormones are activated and they are like oxytocin is the hormone that helps a mother connect with her newborn child. Oxytocin is like that hormone that connects people to each other. And these hormones, kind of pull you in and they make you feel so good. It's like the passionate early stages of love and they just make you feel so amazing and they kind of uh, perpetuate that cycle because once you've been on that high of this amazing relationship that is so awesome, you're always trying to get back to that. And that's one of the reasons why I, I like to compare a toxic relationship to a drug addiction because you're always trying to get back to that place you were when you started. And that's what happens. Like you're addicted to those feelings, to that passion, to that excitement, to the ding on your phone and you're like, oh my gosh, who's, is it him? Is he texting me or is it her? Do I have a new message? And that's part of the system. And then once the love bombing phase starts to wear down, then they start testing you. Like they, they'll they do things like, say, say you have plans to go somewhere and they just don't show. They act like they totally forgot. And you're calling them and texting them and they're not answering you and you're, you're getting all of this stress hormone going because you're like, oh my gosh, are they dead in a ditch somewhere? Like, why aren't they calling me back? They always message me immediately. Where are they? I'm so concerned. And then like maybe the next morning or later that evening, they'll message you and be like, oh, sorry, my phone was dead. And you're like, but we had plans. Like, why didn't you let me know that you weren't coming? I told you my phone was dead, but you didn't show up. Well, I don't have to do everything you say. So like those, that cycle starts to pull. So you've got, now you've got stress hormones that are working over here and you've got your love hormones that are working over here. And in the beginning phases of a relationship with someone who's toxic and manipulating you, you'll go back and forth between those two phases. And once you've felt that stress and that trauma of, you know, being concerned and worrying about, oh my God, are they 
lost? Are they hurt? Do I need to call 911? Like, what is happening? And then you go back and they're like, oh, I'm so sorry. I didn't mean to act that way. Here's some flowers. Let me take you out to dinner. Let's get back to the love phase. And then they pull you back to the love phase. So then you start going, love, stress, love, stress, love, stress, love, stress. Well, guess what? Eventually, there's less of the love unless you really, really, really get upset and mostly the stress and manipulation. And this cycle perpetuates until you basically just give up and stop stressing, stop worrying. And then once you get to that point and you're just like, whatever, they're going to do what they're going to do, then the love bombing starts again because they have to pull you back in to the cycle. So if this sounds familiar, if you've seen anybody or known anybody that's experienced this, I'd love to, to just know that you're you're getting what I'm putting down. So drop an emoji, like a, drop a, don't drop a mean emoji because uh, the FB doesn't like that. So give me a heart or just a clap or some kind of emoji to let me know that you're picking up what I'm putting down. Okay, so the impact of this cycle. The impact of this cycle can be devastating physically. I, we talked about the symptoms earlier, autoimmune issues, things like that, just literally making you homebound in some cases. I know people that have been in emotionally traumatic relationships for 20, 30, 40, 50 years, and they're literally unable to work because of the physical effects that that abuse has on their body. But it also erodes your self-esteem it distorts your perception of what acceptable behavior is. So in my book, I talk about uh, generational cycles, generational patterns. And if you grew up in a home where your family was unpredictable, maybe there was one or two people in your family unit that was really unpredictable, you can that sets you up to, first of all, think that's normal, that it's normal for somebody in your house to just start screaming and yelling and running around like a like their hair's on fire for no reason. Uh, but it also makes you feel like you are responsible for taking care of that situation. Like it's up to you to calm them down. It's up to you to make it right. It's up to you to take care of all the things so that you can prevent that behavior in the future. And that's where that acceptable level of behavior starts to come in. And it can happen at a very young age, but it can also happen, like you might have a, an amazing family life and date somebody in high school that has these toxic patterns and that can hang with you for the rest of your life as well. So it's not always from a family member. It could be from kids at school. It could be from a lot of different things. So I'm not pointing the finger at your spouse or anybody in your family. I'm just saying it's, it's a cycle and it starts somewhere in your life and it hangs with you if you don't recognize it and learn how to purge it from your system. So it, it just leaves you vulnerable for other people to mistreat you because it becomes normal to you. And these people, if they're not called out or you don't learn to set boundaries and step away from that, they just use you as their emotional punching bag and sometimes physical punching bag. So, you know, if they're, if you're in a situation where people call you names or uh, belittle you, they humiliate you like in public or in front of your friends, they try to isolate you from your loved ones. They try to get you to quit your job. That's a good example or move farther away from your family so you don't have easy access to them. They may coerce you into doing things like that. They're always violating your boundaries if you even have any boundaries, because a lot of us, I didn't have any boundaries. I mean, the boundaries I did have were like extreme boundaries, like don't kill me, like <laughs> like I, or don't hit me. I did have a boundary around no, no physical abuse. So I wasn't really ever in relationships where I was physically abused, but I didn't have any boundaries around how you could talk to me, how you could treat me, whether, you know, like all of those things. And I'm learning how to do that now because I'm learning that I have the right. I have the inalienable right. I have the power to say, if you're going to act that way, then I don't want you in my presence. I'm not going to be associated with you if you're going to treat me this way, this way, or this way. 
And oftentimes I find that people that are in a situation like that, they just really don't know how or that they have the permission to create those kinds of boundaries. And, you know, a lot of times you don't even realize that you're in that type of situation until you have like this aha moment. And the next thing you know, you're on the internet looking up, you know, like, why do I feel so depressed? Or why is my favorite person treating me so bad? And then you go down the rabbit hole and you find terms like gaslighting and narcissism and psychopath. And, you know, it's pretty common for people to find those terms and be like, oh, wow. And then you're like in this vortex of research and you start doing all of these things. And unfortunately, what happens a lot of times is once you realize that you're in a cycle of abuse like that, you want to help correct it with your partner or your family member or your work partner or your friend or whatever. And they don't want to be called out on their bad behavior because they're happy the way they are. And you start trying to help them and fix them. And, you know, like if you even mention the word narcissist to someone who's a narcissist, they're going to turn that around on you and they're going to make you out to be the narcissist. And the next thing you know, you're Googling, why am I crazy? <laughs> because you start to believe that you're crazy. I mean, I even went to counseling to find out if I was crazy. And of course, the psychiatrist said that I wasn't crazy. And But he helped me understand what I was going through and why the things that were happening to me were happening. And once I got that understanding, then it took some time for me to break the cycle, break the addiction to that trauma. And one of the reasons I say that it's like a, a drug is because when someone is abusing you all the time, it's a cycle, then you get really good at doing it to yourself. So um, if you have like ruminating thoughts, or you just like and ruminating thoughts is repetitive thoughts. Like, so you go to bed at night and you're laying in bed and you maybe weren't even thinking about anything because you were keeping yourself busy while you were up and moving around, cleaning the house and doing all the things. And then you go to bed and you cannot stop yourself from like reliving all of that stuff. That's ruminating thoughts, just reliving the same thing over and over and over again. Well, that is hurting you. It's hurting your ability to sleep. It's hurting your health. It's hurting your mind and body and all of the things. It's emotional trauma and it's a pattern of abuse. So not only do they abuse you, but they teach you how to get really good at abusing yourself. And most of us already have things in our mind that we think of ourselves that are not nice. So like maybe you're thinking, oh my gosh, I'm overweight. I'm never going to look the way I'm supposed to look. Or, you know, maybe you think you are crazy or maybe you think that you're OCD or overprotective or whatever and you just keep reliving those things or maybe you said something to somebody in anger because you were pushed too far and then you end up feeling bad about what you said and then you relive that over and over and over again it's very common but then also like binge eating and starvation and not going to doctor's appointments not taking care of your health not exercising those all are ways of self torture so we kind of get into the, the practice of being abused. And then when someone else is no longer there to do it, we do it to ourselves. And I was stuck in that cycle for a long time. And it took me um, a hypnotherapist and a coach and a whole lot of things to figure out what I was doing to myself. And then even once I figured it out, it took me some time to break those habits because they are habits and they are an addiction. So learning how to manage those things and managing your own thoughts, raising your level of awareness and your emotional intelligence are super, super important when it comes to healing from this kind of thing. So uh, let's see, I made some notes. I just wanna make sure. Um, oh, okay, and I wanted to say, um, if you're comparing, if you start to compare some of the relationships that you've had with different people in your life, you might see some similarities in the way they act, phrases that they say, I mentioned that earlier, um, or how they act around certain people. Like they might be this amazing human around some people, but then at home, they're a completely different person. 
And then do you find that you're making excuses for someone else's behavior? Do you catch yourself like, oh, well, he's had a rough day or I made him mad a while ago. So he's sorry if he seems agitated. You know, like, are you making excuses for their alcoholism or their bad behavior or any of those things? So it's important once you realize that you're in that situation, first of all, to figure out if you need to get out of it or if you can go to counseling or do whatever. A lot of times if you're with someone, any kind of family member, but especially a spouse who is in this cycle and you try to do group counseling with them, it just kind of gets turned around and and they they, first of all, they learn more ways to torture you. And secondly, they will use what they learn in counseling to manipulate you further. So you have to be really careful. And I highly recommend that if you think you're in a situation like this, you find a coach, somebody that is well-versed in trauma or abusive relationships, like a, a counselor or therapist and or coach that's that does those kinds of things. I prefer to help people once they're out of the situation, not so much while they're still in it because it's too triggering for me even now. But, uh, I'm just saying don't go home and go, I read on the internet that this or my counselor said that because it will be turned around and used against you if you're with somebody who's manipulative in that way. So keep it to yourself. If you're going to start on a thing of self-growth, you know, maybe find a friend or a relative that you trust that you can talk to. If you need someone to talk to, that's also a sign of um, lack of boundaries and um, emotional immaturity is always having to have someone to talk to, but it's okay in the beginning to start doing that. But you'll find as you heal that you need less advice and less support from others because you're more confident in your own decisions. Um, uh, so, you know, you, you have to start working on reframing your negative self-talk. You have to recognize it and then reframe it. You have to learn to set healthy boundaries and you need to start nurturing your own well-being. Take care of your own health. Take care of your own mindset and remember that you deserve love, respect, a joyful and fulfilling life free from abuse and trauma. And it's a long road sometimes for people because it's so deep rooted because it started from when they were children. So it's a process, but it's worth it. It's so worth it to break those bonds and start repairing yourself from the inside and getting rid of that self-punishment and those negative cycles that you're doing even to yourself once you're free from a relationship that's harsh like that oh uh, so let's see what else did i want to mention um oh yes i talked about this earlier but i just want to touch base on it again when you are in a relationship like that you have this feeling of euphoria when the relationship is good and then you also have those feelings of stress and anxiety when the relationship is not as good. So you're constantly going between, what can I do to make this better? How can I get back to where I was? And then how can I stay there? And once you leave the relationship, you find yourself kind of in a deep pit sometimes because you don't have all of that drama to instigate those feel-good hormones. And um, this wasn't something that I put in here originally, but one of the things I wanted to mention is if you find that you're no longer in a situation where you're being emotionally abused or psychologically abused or physically abused, and you find that you feel empty inside and lonely and desperate for some attention and you wanna pick up the phone and text or call that person, you need something that helps raise those hormones on your own. So go play with somebody's dog, play with your children, go for a walk, exercise raises those hormones. Do something that gets your muscles moving, do something that gets your bodies moving. Don't resort to sugar because chocolate and sugar will also give you that effect, but it woo, will happen. Woo, hmm, a moment on the lips, a lifetime on the hips, right? So don't use things that are bad for you 
to get rid of that feeling like alcohol. A lot of people like to resort to alcohol when they feel that way. And what you're doing is you're just creating another problem that you have to resolve later. So if you can get yourself to do something that's good for you, get a hobby, start a new hobby, learn something, go to school, get an education on something that you're interested in, do something that gives you those feel good hormones so that you're not compelled to go get them from the original source because that's not normal and that's not how you should feel. You have to find a new normal that doesn't include that super, super high adrenaline feeling because that's not how you're supposed to live day to day and it will mess up your health. That All that high stress all the time will mess up your health. So um, let's see what else. I don't want to make this video too long. I've already been going on for 30 minutes. So, okay. I pretty much got through all the content that I wanted to talk about. So I'm going to go um, briefly over 10 signs that you might relate to or someone you love might relate to in a situation like this. I made a checklist that you can go down or share with someone. And if you're interested in getting your hands on that checklist, a comment checklist below and I will get that sent to you and what I did was I created it as a little website so that you don't have to download it or anything in case you don't want that on your phone or your computer so I wanted to make it something that you could look at and then close without it downloading anywhere so that's what that'll be about and if you are afraid to have that sent to you in a message form let me know and we'll I'll get it to you one way or another. Uh, okay, so if you're in a situation where you're constantly feeling criticized or belittled, you feel like you're being isolated from your loved ones or family, especially friends, if you're being manipulated, gaslighted, feeling like you're walking on eggshells all the time, if you feel like you're being controlled or maybe don't have access to things like your cell phone or finances or groceries, if... Um, you're in a place where you feel like there's always some sort of emotional drama going on in your house. If someone threatens you or intimidates you or puts their hands on you, that is not okay. If someone's always blaming and guilt tripping you, making everything your fault. If you hadn't done that, then I wouldn't have done this. That is not okay. If they're withholding affection or silent treatment, things like that. I didn't know the silent treatment was a form of abuse but it is. If you're feeling like your self-worth is constantly going down, 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 it could be that the person you're with is causing that to happen. Like no one else would want you. Or I went to this restaurant today and I looked all around the whole place and I couldn't find anyone as beautiful as you. Well, why were they doing that? And how is that supposed to make me feel good about myself? It isn't. It's a form of abuse. And if you feel trapped or hopeless, or you're wondering why you're depressed and you've never really been a depressed person, like what's causing that? Is there a root cause? Is there a deeper cause? Is something happening in your life that's making you feel that way? So that's everything I have for you today. I hope that this was helpful. If you find that you have questions, I know that there are some comments. I cannot see them from where I'm at. I will have to answer them, but please comment if you're interested in those things. If you want the a list of, um, oh, I lost my hashtag, do, do, do. What was it? Signs, if you want the signs and symptoms, comment signs. If you'd like to know more about the checklist that I made, comment checklist, and I will get that to you in some fashion. Um, what else? I think that is it. All right, well, I hope this was helpful. If you know anybody that needs this information, please invite them to the group and tag them in this video. And if I can help you anyway, if you'd like to know what it looks like to work with someone who can help you work through some of these feelings or some of these symptoms, I'm a naturopathic doctor and a transformational coach. I can help you sort things out and get on the track to healing 
and if you are not ready to do that there's tons of resources in this group and I intend to do more of those as time goes on so thanks for watching let me know if I can help you and please do comment and share this video you won't be able to share it outside of the group because it is a private group but you can invite people in and tag them if you'd like all right, so have a fabulous day. And if you're looking for those resources, make sure to check your DMs because I am probably not friends with most of you because this is a large group and you can only have so many friends on Facebook. I can send you a friend request, but I don't think you can send me one because my face is professional. So that's kind of how that goes. But um, make sure you turn on notifications in this group if you haven't. I believe you click on the join button and click on manage notifications from there to turn them on. I hope you have a great rest of your week and I love you guys. Take care. See you soon.